everyone, welcome back to Liz Sews. If you're new to my channel from Sovember, I am very happy to have you. Now what is Sovember, you ask? Well, Sovember 2018 is the brainchild of the lovely Akram of Akram's Ideas. She came up with the idea that for National Sewing Month, we would bring you a whole host of tutorials using free patterns you can download for yourself. Now along with Akram, we also find tutorials from Sewing So Many Fabrics, Lifting Pins and Needles, Elizabeth Made This, Myself, and Natural Dane. Be sure to check out the channels of all these lovely women in the description box below. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a bralette tutorial. Now the bralette we'll be doing is the So So Easy Bralette. You can pick up this pattern for yourself from the Craftsy website, and I'll make sure to link that to, in the description box below as well. The So So Easy bralette is, well, so, so easy. This is a very great beginner bra pattern, and so I'm excited to share this with you. The only measurement you're going to need is your full bust. So right around the biggest portion of your bust, you're gonna take that measurement and see where it corresponds to on the charts. Now, this pattern is not recommended for anyone that is any larger than, say, a C or D cup. If you're new to bra making, you're going to still need to buy lace for this pattern. I've linked a couple of my favorite vendors in the description box below that have wonderful options when it comes to buying stretch lace, so be sure to check them out. Let's get started. First, let's take a look at the different pattern pieces for this bralette. This is a very good beginner pattern because it only has three pieces, van and then the two cups. Now the band is cut along the fold right here. One thing you want to make sure that you do when you're putting your pattern piece onto the lace is you want to make sure that the lowest points of each of those scallops just hit where your pattern ends. So you can see how when I put my pattern piece on top of the lace, the scallops extend beyond the pattern piece. And that's what you want. If you want to make your bralette a little bit longer, you can always have it extend out as much further than this. So say it could extend out an inch just to make it an inch longer. That's perfectly acceptable. So here you can see I've cut out the lace. I made sure that when I folded it, the lowest point of the scallop was at that center fold line and that's just gonna give me a really nice um, low point right at the center front of my bralette. Other than that, I really didn't pay much attention to any of the placement. So when you're cutting out your bra cut pieces, there's a couple of things you wanna keep an eye on. First is you want the low points of the scallops to align along the straight edge of the pattern piece. Both of the cut pieces have a straight edge and that's gonna be where you want the scallops to hit. The second thing is you can see that there is a dotted line marked on the pattern piece and this is going to be the seam allowance. You want the low edge of the scallop to also hit right at your seam allowance. So you can see that 3 eighths of an inch in on my scallop is where the lowest point dips and that's exactly where my seam allowance is. That means when you go to sew these two cut pieces together, that both sides of the cup are going to hit at the same point on a scallop and it gives you a much more uniform appearance. So you're gonna wanna cut two of each of these um, in opposite directions. So cut it one way like this and one way like this, or you could also have the lace doubled up with wrong sides touching and cut it all out in one go, which is what I've done for mine. So you can very easily finish up here, and this can be all that you cut out, which is how the pattern recommends. However, for this tutorial, I've actually cut all of the pattern pieces out again in a piece of stretch mesh. This is a very, very lightweight mesh, elastic material. Um, I find it in Joann's, um, but I'm sure you can find it in some other um, fabric stores that sell apparel type fabric. Uh, and the reason that I'm going to be adding stretch mesh to this is because I think it adds a little bit of stability to lace. Um, lace is beautiful, but it's, it's not quite uh, as 
robust as I would like it to be if you really want to get a lot of wear out of this bra. So, so adding um, another layer of stretch mesh will give you that extra layer of stability that you need for a bra but doesn't really add very much to the weight and because I'm using sort of a nude colored one you won't really see it very much either. Lastly we'll go over our notions. So this bralette does not take very many elastics compared to most bras which again makes it a very easy way to start out. So the first thing you're going to need is some skinny elastic. I'm using an eighth inch skinny elastic. That's just what I have in my stash, but this also will work well with a quarter inch skinny elastic. Some of that just the white elastic that they sell at um, like Brits makes and stuff like that is perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be specific bra elastic. And then the other thing you're going to need is straps, bra straps. So I'm going to be using an actually pretty wide, this is a 5 eighths of an inch bra strap, and I have a meter of this, and then I'm going to need corresponding rings and sliders to go with my strap. So when I say corresponding, bra straps come in a variety of widths. You can get them as 3 eighths, half an inch, 5 eighths of an inch, 1 inch, and so you're going to need rings and sliders that correspond in width. So 5 eighths of an inch strap means I need a 5 eighths of an inch ring and slider. And you need two of each of those as well. Now a lot of bra making supplies sell the rings and sliders in, in sets like this for around one and a half to three dollars. I purchased mine on eBay. I get about 50 sets at once for about eight dollars. So it's it's a lot more economical to get it on eBay. But if this is your first bra or you don't know how many bras you want to do, I think it's it's much better to just get one set and see if it's something that you like and want to try out. I've also seen those available at local. I've seen these rings and sliders available at local fabric stores like Joann's. So it's, a, it's fairly easy to get a hold of as well. So a couple quick notes on the setup of the machine. I have a Microtex needle in here and that's just a really thin, sharp needle. The Microtex needle is what I prefer sewing with most often unless I'm doing jersey. Um, but any uh, just standard universal needle will also work just fine. I also have a walking foot on my machine and this just helps to make sure that all those layers stay together exactly the way I want them to. Now if your machine doesn't have a walking foot that's perfectly fine. As long as you can do a straight and a zigzag stitch you can make a bra. This walking foot just helps it be a little bit easier when you're doing more advanced bras with lots and lots of layers. And finally the thread. The thread I'm using is just a Coates and Clark polyester all-purpose thread. I would definitely recommend using a polyester based thread versus a cotton or silk thread just because you're going to have a lot of tension on those seams and you don't want it to pop as easily. Let's get started sewing. I always like my first step to be the cups. I think it makes me feel like I'm getting a lot further. So what you're going to do is you're going to get one each of your inner and outer cup as well as the matching lining that goes with it. So the inner cup is going to be the piece that has that little wave and a point at the end. You want to take your lining and your outer cup piece, so the one that has a nice smooth curve at the edge, and you want to lay the lining and the outer cup piece on top of each other. Then we want to take the inner cut piece and the right sides together, place that on top of your outer cup. I like to pin this in place now before adding the second part of the lining. I just find it helps me keep things together a little bit easier. So now that's all pinned, we have, this is the wrong side of the lace, so the two right sides are touching each other, and then you should have lining on the back. The last step is just to pin the lining on the back. So the order of it should be the inner cup and then the outer cup lining. 
then the outer cup and inner cup lace. Once you have all four of those pieces pinned together, we can take this to the machine. We're going to take a straight stitch along this pinned curved edge, and we're gonna sew at 3 8 of an inch of a seam allowance. Most bras are sewn with a quarter of an inch, so this gives us a little bit wider of a seam allowance, which I think makes it a lot easier for beginners to try. So I've got this set up on my machine with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I drop my presser foot, and then we're just gonna start sewing with a straight stitch. Just going to back tack at the end of my stitching. So here's what it should look like. The first thing I want to do is sort of clip off this excess corner bits. Then we're going to open it out. So if you open out one edge of the lining and one edge of the lace, what you should have is something that looks like this. So remember when I said you wanted to cut it for the low ends of the point to be at your seam allowance? That way you get this nice even curve up at the top. And from the inside, because we've used lining, all of that lining is tucked away and hidden inside with no raw edges. The last step on this cuff is just to top stitch it down. I'm gonna top stitch it down with a zigzag stitch just to this across the seam all the way from the bottom to the top of the cup. I'm gonna set my machine to a zigzag stitch and then I align the edge of the seam allowance up with sort of the eighth of an inch marker on my presser foot. So once you zigzag stitch, it should look something like this. And on the inside, it'll look like that. So the first cup is completed. You're just gonna repeat those same steps for the second cup. So now I have my second cup done. Now one thing I can show you right now is you see how my right now my lining is just a little bit too long. So you can see it on the peeking out above the scallops and that's just fine. Sometimes it happens, stuff shifts around when you're sewing. It's very easy at this point to just trim that up. So I like to trim it so it hits just a little bit below the scallops. So see now, now it's an invisible lining. The next step is going to be attaching our two cups to our band piece. So here I have just the lace laid down and I have it the lace, the right side facing up. And I'm gonna take my cup with the right side facing down. Now remember what I said earlier, that the, the cup piece with the little curve and then swoop, that's gonna be your center front. You should have a little notch cut into the lace that we marked when we were doing the patterns itself. And that little notch is going to line up with the center front of the bra. This is actually going to overlap on both cut pieces, so they'll cross over at the front. Next, I'm just going to carefully pin these two pieces together, the cup to the band. It's a little tricky because there are, they are opposing curves. So one is a, a hump and the other is a dip. But as long as you take your time and use lots of pins, you should be fine. Okay, so now we've gotten one cup pinned into place. We're gonna pin in the other cup as well. So just like before, we have the lace band right side up. We have the cup right sides together. We're gonna find our little notch and line that up with the notch on the other one. 
and start pinning from the center front. You should have a notch in your band just to check your work to make sure that your seam is lining up with the notch in the band. The other thing I forgot to mention is that you don't want to stretch either the cup or the band. You want to make sure you're just pinning those together one for one. Now I like to pin on the lining fabric on top of that. So you're going to have a sandwich of your, your lace band, your two cups, and then your lining band. So find the center front and then just reposition your pins to include that lining. Once you reach the end of that cup, you want to continue pinning the lining to the actual band itself. Once you have the lining completely pinned into place, we're going to take this over to the machine. We're going to use a zigzag stitch for this line of stitching because we want to make sure that it has the ability to stretch around the circumference of our body. So we're going to take a zigzag stitch at 3 8 of an inch. So I have the edge of my fabric lined up at 3 8 of an inch and I have a zigzag stitch. Once you have it sewn up, it should look something like this. Now the last thing we are going to do before we turn it around to the right side is just reinforce that seam allowance. That's where the skinny elastic comes in. I'm just going to sew the skinny elastic in with a zigzag stitch as close as I can to that original line of zigzag stitching. Now if you think you can do it all in one pass, then go ahead. You can stitch it on while you're doing your first line of zigzag stitching, but I just think it's a little bit easier to sew it into the seam allowance afterwards. I'm going to lay it, the bra, uh, to my left side and just the seam allowance sticking out. So I'm going to lay it with the bra on my right side, like left side and just the seam, seam allowance sticking out. The elastic is going directly underneath the needle and we're going to use a zigzag stitch. I don't bother pinning this in, I just leave this elastic loose and sort of put it in place as I'm going along. So here we have the skinny elastic all sewn in just inside of that seam allowance. We're very close to being finished guys. So you just want to fold the bra out. You should have obviously a side that's covered in lining and a side that is nice and pretty and lacy. So just fold the lace and the lining so that it looks like this. You should have that reinforced seam allowance tucked inside and then we're going to sew a line of zigzag stitch very close to the edge of this. I like to pin it in place just to help me make sure everything stays put. So here you can see I've pinned all along that bust line. On the ends that extend beyond the cup, it's helpful to roll the lace part just a little bit higher than the lining. That way the lining doesn't peek out when you're wearing it. And then all along the bottom of the cup, I've just pulled the lining and the outer band and then pinned that in place. So we're going to use a zigzag stitch close as we can to the edge of this and sew all the way across the band. So see I've lined up the edge of my lace with the edge of my presser foot there and I'm just going to use a zigzag stitch.
once you zigzag that in place, top stitch it in place, it should look something like this. From the inside, you have a nice clean edge and everything is tucked away and hidden. The last step of completing the band is just to sew it together into a large circle. So I'm gonna put my two raw edges together and sew that at 3 eighths of an inch with a straight stitch. Once you've stitched it, it should look something like this. Now we're going to open up that seam allowance and just top stitch it down to make it a little bit flatter. I like to top stitch this with a zigzag stitch directly over top of my line of stitching from the front. So just opened out my seam allowance so that it's laying nice and flat. I'm going to use the widest zigzag stitch that my machine can do and just go down that line. So the bra portion is done. All we have to do now is make our straps. I'm gonna cut my strap elastic as two pieces about 17 inches long. Once I've got my two pieces of elastic, I'm going to take a slider. You wanna run the slider up through one side and then back down the other. So you should have the good side of the elastic facing out like this, and then the plush or softer side of the elastic is gonna be um, touching the actual bridge of the slider. We're gonna fold this and then take it over to our machine with a straight stitch and go three or four passes along there just to secure it. So here's what it looks like once you secure it. You wanna go to the other end of the elastic and take a ring and slide it on. And then you take your end of your elastic, which doesn't have the slider. So you wanna face it so you have the folded edge facing the plush side of the strap. And just like we did before, we're gonna run it up one side and back down the other. Once you've done that, you should have an adjustable strap. Once you have your straps done, you need to make a way, place for this to attach to the bra. So using my leftover strap elastic, I've cut two pieces. These are much longer than I really need. This is about three inches. And I'm just going to run it through this ring that we've already attached to our strap. Should look something like this. Now I'm just gonna take that extension and zigzag stitch to the inside of the top of the cup. So I'm just gonna use a straight stitch and I go back a couple times back and forth right there just to secure it in place. Once it's secured in place, I'll cut up all of this excess. So here's what it looks like when it's attached. You can see I've trimmed off the excess and I've used a, just a zigzag stitch because I think that looks a little bit more invisible on top of the lace. So the final step is just to attach the other end of the strap to the back of the bra. 
So where you attach it is completely up to you. I think that for me, I like it about three inches from the center back line. So where that join is in the back, I measure over three inches this way and three inches this way. And then I attach my two straps with another line of zigzag stitching. So once you have attached the straps in on the back like this, you should have a finished bra. Well, hopefully your finished bra looks something like this. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure again to check out all of the lovely free tutorials that we have for you this month. And be sure to share any of your makes with me by tagging me on Instagram at Liz underscore sews. See you next time.